A warm greeting, today is Saturday, March 16, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia speaking. Over the past weeks, we have been discussing several runs of seasonal models where all predict that the 2024 hurricane season could be extremely active in the Atlantic region. This week, the projection of the ensemble of members of the CES models was also released, forecasting that the hurricane season could be more active than usual. In this video, I will be showing the different parameters observed in the Atlantic region. This run extends until August, which is when the peak of the season begins. Additionally, this week NOAA's latest forecast regarding the ENSO was published. We will talk a little about what will happen with the El Niño phenomenon, and how the La Niña phenomenon can establish itself in the Pacific region for the peak of the 2024 hurricane season. Overall, you can see that the tropical Atlantic region and the main area of cyclonic development continue to experience very warm temperatures for this time of year, at the highest levels ever recorded. Also, look at the equatorial region of the Pacific, where the El Niño phenomenon continues to weaken with the arrival of some cooler waters than usual across the equator. These are indications that El Niño continues to weaken, and over the next two to three months, we will move towards neutral ENSO conditions. Also, observe the progress of colder than usual temperature anomalies continuing to move towards the surface in the eastern equatorial Pacific region. This mass of cooler water from ocean depths will continue to move towards the surface, and this is precisely what we see when the El Niño phenomenon begins to weaken. This is why NOAA has increased the probability of experiencing the La Niña phenomenon for the months of June, July, and August. For example, for the peak of the season, it is forecasted that there is up to an 82% chance of the La Niña phenomenon being present. For the beginning of the hurricane season, between June and July, you can see that neutral ENSO conditions or the La Niña phenomenon are anticipated. Remember that this will cause conditions to be very favorable for the formation of tropical systems, especially in the Caribbean region and the Gulf of Mexico. Additionally, and unfortunately, ocean temperatures in the Atlantic region continue to be very warm. As you can see in this graph, the oceanic heat content in the main area of cyclonic development is at record levels for this time. In fact, the heat content in the Caribbean Sea and the tropical Atlantic region is at levels typical for June. They far exceed the values we had during last year, where record high temperatures were also established in the main area of cyclonic development. As discussed in the runs of other global models, the combination of the La Niña phenomenon and the very warm temperatures in the Atlantic can generate very favorable conditions for a hyperactive season. Let's look at the projections of the ensemble of members of the CES models, which include runs from European, Canadian, and Japanese models. You can see that for the months of June, July, and August, it is forecasted that we will have the La Niña phenomenon in the Pacific. Additionally, much warmer temperatures than usual are forecasted in the tropical Atlantic region, especially in the area east of the Lesser Antilles and the Caribbean Sea region. Unfortunately, it seems that the hottest temperatures will be focusing on the main area of cyclonic development, which could result in an extremely dangerous Cape Verde season. The distribution of these temperature anomalies can create better conditions than what we saw in 2020, which was the most active hurricane season in history. However, in 2020, we also saw warmer temperatures in the North Atlantic, which caused many of the storms that formed in 2020 to be short-lived and not reach a higher category in terms of cyclonic strength. However, if the projections of these models are realized, the distribution of warmer temperatures will be focused in the tropical region. This can cause more dangerous and higher risk conditions for the Caribbean, Gulf of Mexico, and the United States compared to what we had in 2020. This is also evident in the projection of atmospheric pressure anomalies, where in blue, we can see pressures below normal for the period of June, July, and August, especially focused just east of the Caribbean. This could indicate that the cyclone tracks this year may be much further west compared to previous years. Also, note that higher pressure anomalies are forecasted across the North Atlantic and just east of the United States, which could also help these cyclones track more towards the west. This is why in the precipitation anomalies projection, you can see that the CES models forecast precipitation anomalies above normal from the region of Africa towards the Caribbean, and especially in the Caribbean region. And although we are two and a half months away from the official start of the hurricane season, the projections are not very encouraging. It seems that this hurricane season will be very active and dangerous for the Caribbean region, Central America, the Gulf of Mexico, and the eastern United States. Here on Hurricane Info, I will continue to keep an eye on new projections from global models and also on the forecast from the University of Colorado, which will be published during the month of April. Stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel to stay informed during the 2024 hurricane season. I hope everyone has an excellent weekend.